Chris, what is our third main topic today? This one comes from Jerry Mitzer. Hello, Campia crew. So my very first movie I went to the theaters to see as we started coming out of the pandemic was Bob Odenkirk's Nobody. That was one of my first ones, too. I freaking love that movie. Love it. The way it ended obviously left the door open for a sequel, but I always figured it didn't do enough at the box office to justify it. Just read that the director is saying it is absolutely happening and that they're in active development with it already. Are you surprised to hear this? And are you excited for it? Thanks. All right. Thanks for sending that in. And yeah, I think... I mean, in the middle of the pandemic, they decided to put X-Men New Mutants. They decided to put New Mutants in theaters. No theaters in Los Angeles were open. I literally, it had been six months so I'd been, since I had been to a movie. So me and my buddy Soul, we literally got in the car, drove three hours to Las Vegas, we were, an AMC theater was open, watched New Mutants, got back in the car, drove three and a half hours back. I think the next movie I saw in a theater was Kong versus Godzilla or Godzilla versus Kong. And then I think, I think the one after that was nobody starring Bob Odenkirk. The trailer certainly looked like they had promise kind of felt a little bit like a John wick ripoff. Not surprising considering a lot of people involved in creating this movie were also involved with John wick and seeing the movie. It absolutely is kind of a John wick ripoff. And that was perfectly okay because the movie was bonkers fun. Yep. So fun. And seeing Christopher Lloyd pop up in it, I don't know. I'm like, oh my God. But Bob Odenkirk sold me on it. I had a great time with it. Uh, Wonder Woman's mother is in it. Uh, Connie Nielsen is in it. Was, was that, that was Connie Nielsen who was in there, right? Yes. 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 Connie Nielsen was played, uh, played of course, uh, Bob Odenkirk's wife in that. I, it was just so good. And it was very simple. And a lot of similarities to John Wick too. Like not just, the action style, but even the, the kind of the underground world, they said, very, very, very John Wickian. But still, it was perfectly fine. And you're right. The movie ends in such a way that you're just like, they totally tease a sequel. It didn't exactly blow up the box office. But here's the thing. I think they all understood this movie was out in theaters at a time when a lot of people were not going to the movie theaters. And I think they understood that. And I think when you combine that with the fact that, hey, a lot of people really enjoyed this film a lot, I think that thing gave this thing life. And now this comes to us from David Leach, who is the director of the first one and will be directing the second one. And he was talking about like them doing another one. He said this, oh, I think everyone is really excited about it. Everyone involved is like full steam ahead. We are in the script process. And I think we had so much fun making that. Kelly and I had a blast. The actors had a blast. The studio loved the results. And it's happening, talking about a sequel. I mean, I think it's happening as fast as we can make it happen. When asked if he thinks it will actually happen, yes, I do. I do. Because there are these certain journeys that you go on, and they're just undeniable experiences for the people involved. And that was one of them. And I think all of us want to go back and play in that universe. And we want to see Bob bring the character to life again. Again, that comes to us from the director, David Leach. And I love hearing this. Now, of course, we have heard directors say before, I'm absolutely doing this movie. It's absolutely happening. And sometimes it does not. But for a movie like this, where it, the reception to it was so good, it was one of the films that started the process of getting people to start to come back to the movie theaters again. Bob Odenkirk's name right now is as big as it has ever been. And obviously they have an extreme passion for it. Everybody's on board for it. The right and the director is saying, this thing is absolutely happening. And I, for one, love it. Rob, it's not always a great idea to make a sequel to a film. You hear they're moving forward with a nobody too. Is this the type of movie you should make a sequel to? Well, I think, yeah, because it, first of all, one, it didn't cost a lot of money. And, and two, it's probably done quite good uh, in ancillary markets, whether it was VOD, it probably got a lot of views wherever it's wound up, and I don't know exactly where its disposition is on uh, broadcast or cable, but I bet, and, and with Bob Odenkirk coming off of the final season of Better Call Saul, I think that this is exactly the kind of movie that deserves a sequel, because it's one of those movies that, as it's moved through the process of being theatrically released and going online, all these people have seen it. And it's kind of like what happened in movies like Terminator back in the day. Right. When Terminator comes out on home video, you know, it, it did well in the theaters, but then everybody watched it. You know, everybody caught up with it. And so the audience for this movie, for a sequel, has grown exponentially. So it makes sense to me that 
a movie that doesn't cost a lot of money that literally is about you could put Bob Odenkirk in a room with a bunch of dudes like a single room and fighting there's 10 minutes of screen time and people would watch that because he was that badass and that much fun so not a lot of money a lot of bang for your buck and I think a sequel to this movie you put it in a theater now people are going to show up probably a lot more of them too Chris you really enjoyed the first one. Should they be doing another one of these? I mean, everyone had a blast. Yeah. I still think of him from Mr. Show, and it's so yep. <laughs> wild to watch him in this. But I think that's the whole point, right? It just, the movie just kind of did this inverse with your expectations, and you were like, well, okay, yeah, he can kick a lot of ass. Look at Christopher Lloyd in here. I love you so much. Um, <laughs> If everyone enjoyed this so much, if it was that cheap to make and everything too, why not? And I do think it is getting that further uh, viewing now that it's gone to streaming. I think it's gaining notoriety too. I didn't watch this in theaters. I watched it once I could stream it. Yeah. And it's so fun and bananas. And I never knew Bob Odenkirk could kick ass. Plus, I mean, everyone loves him. Y'all remember his health scare last year. Everyone yeah. on the internet just panicked and we did not want to lose this sweet, precious man. I think people are dying to watch more stuff with him. By the way, do you know what else? Nobody talks about this. He was in, I think Spielberg directed it with Tom Hanks, Meryl Streep, uh, it wasn't called, wasn't called the paper. What was it called? It was nominated for best picture a uh, couple of years. Uh, no, spotlight. it wasn't spotlight. Um, I'm, why am I freezing on that? It was nominated right, for best yeah. picture. And the movie was great. Bob Ordenkirk was in that. And Bob Ordenkirk was post. What's that? The post? post. Thank oh, okay. you. So he's in there with arguably the greatest actor of our generation. He's in there with not even arguably the greatest actress of all time. And to me, he shined. Like, absolutely shining that. He was fantastic. And can you bring up that last picture you just had of Christopher Lloyd and Bob Odenkirk? And here's, listen, you walk into a studio, into a boardroom, say, okay, I got a pitch for you. Bob Odenkirk, Kirk, Christopher Lloyd, and Rizzo walk into a room. And like that, look at that picture. That is the craziest, like, weirdest, most <laughs> awkward collection of three possible individuals you could have. And Doc yet, Brown, I Wu-Tang yeah. Clan, and... <laughs> And, and better call saw, yeah. It just, but it, it, but I it accept Rizza anywhere though. When he shows up on a project, I'm like, that makes sense it to me. It just worked. <laughs> it worked so well. Anyway, Good. I think this is great news. Question is for you guys. What do you think about this? Would you be excited for a nobody to like we are? Maybe you think the first one gets way too much hype. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and leave those thoughts there. We want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of today's video. Storyblocks. Guys, I have been an enthusiastic fan and user of Storyblocks for years. I go to them whenever I'm in need of content creation assets like royalty-free music, video clips, or templates for my creative projects, ranging anywhere from little editorial videos to my very own full feature documentary. Storyblocks helps you bring your stories, videos, and projects to life without sacrifices due to time, budget, or access to resources. They have over 1 million different story assets ranging from stock videos, audio and music, an in-browser video editor, and they feature pre-designed templates, animations, and outros. Storyblocks uses an affordable subscription model and their unlimited access plans offers, well, unlimited video and audio downloads rather than a costly pay-per-clip model. With Storyblocks, you'll be able to create more content and more importantly, better content, all while using a subscription plan that fits your budget, utilizing unlimited downloads of demand-driven and diverse content. So if you're interested in upping your content creation game, head over to W www.storyblocks.com slash campia and get started today. That's www.storyblocks.com slash campia.